Awo, Shalom, Ras Tesari. Greetings. Ene Ras Yadinos Tesari name. I am Ras Iadonis Tefari of the Lion of Judah Society of His Imperial Majesty. I want to make this teaching, this, this lecture right here, keep in the simplicity of our Black Lord and Savior, Shua Ha Moshia. So I want to say at the outset, grab your pen and your paper, your sacred scripture, bring a willing and attentive mind to receive the half of the story that has not been told since our ancestors, the once lost but now found Beta Israel, the Ethiopian Hebrews who were enslaved in these here Western hemispheres in this in this in this hell on earth since fifteen thirty. So this is this is the the call, the proclamation, especially for the Dekamazamorit especially for the disciples. Now, I want to start this off exactly where the inspiration is. Um, we've been receiving communications, some reasonings, some direct communication from certain brothers and sisters that we've been able to have some regular communication with and even some not so regular communication with, but a couple of ones and ones to get through and we get to talk directly and and we love those reasonings you know um because they help to give us a certain insight unfortunately many ones we don't get to reason with in that sort of um one on one as much as we would like and surely not as much as they and others of you all would like um I pray that I for that in the name of the King of Kings, Kadamawi Haila Salasi in his Christ, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos, Getachina Medhanatachin, Negar again. However, that's basically how it is. The 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 work, Ja works, must be fulfilled and completed by I and I, his sons and his his daughters in Christ and through our faith in Christ. However, this brings us now, this connects with um, both this, this sabbatical um, reading and this parasha here, this kufub, the midbar, midrebada, because it's the wilderness. And as we noted in the number 34 of the Rastafari sabbatical studies, that this is dealing with service, discipleship in the wilderness, but the people wandered. They wandered. And I give thanks to the brothers and sisters who, especially over the last couple of weeks, we notice, and a couple of them we want to hail up, um, because the question is, um, sent, we give out and send our salam to, in the name of Yeshua to you all, but in particular, those of y'all that we have reasoned with, whether face-to-face -face or whether um, on the, the telephone, but those that we have reasoned with most recently have really been in I and I um, prayers, I've kept you in I and I prayers, but in I and I heart and mind, because y'all are giving I and I and myself a a a micro of the macro, you know, was a, a small piece of the big picture of the trials and the tribulations and the 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 demonic um, distractions that has beset many of you all in your walk in true Rastafari to the glory of the King of Kings and His Christ. And you all have noticed, some have noticed that, um, like Brother Abraham, for example, we were just reasoning, and I, I know I said I'll call the eye forward, Brother Abraham, hopefully you'll get to cite this, but when we left off, we said, you know what, you're the, I don't know what number, but umpteenth brethren or sisterin that has communicated to I and is, is reminding I and I that we need to preach and to teach on the, the faith in its applicative. So we might call this the faith app. This is the faith-based app or the Amen app. This, th th there must be a teaching and 
a receptability, a receiving of this teaching. Um, let, let's get into this, because this is a part of the service, a part of I and I uh, role and responsibility in Yeshua HaMoshiach, seeing that there is this need that, that ones don't really know the power of prayer. But prayer is powered by, the true prayer is powered by faith. But what is faith? And, and what about belief? And, and how does belief and faith? And many are still in a state of confusion on that. Like, for example, many Rastafari, the Rastafari would say, I and I know, I and I now believe, because belief has doubt in it, so forth, so on. Some might say because in the middle of believe is L-I-E. That's, that's, that's kind of basic, yes. But at the level of a mature Christian, a mature brother or sister, that's like kindergarten. That's like now we should be on the university level, the, the universal level, the universal level, in other words, that, that real college level, or at least at the higher school. But we have to go back to some of the basic, the basic training, the basic teaching. I said to Brother Abraham, I said, What's happening to a lot of you all, my brothers and sisters whom I love in Yeshua, but you have to recognize that I am the one whom Jesus Christos loves. Not just me to the schools of you all, but you have to receive the word. It's like when the psalm says, Jah is my shepherd, I shall not want. You can receive that, right? But how about when it says that, um, it says that, his righteousness, he has been made his, righteous, his righteousness for us. Do you say that I am the righteousness of God in Christ? Can you acknowledge, can you receive the word? So we're actually going a little bit ahead of I and I self on this matter because a lot of ones are hearing it but are becoming forgetful hearers. So I submit to you that some of what you all are going through, similar to what ones like I and I have gone through is because of ignorance. Some of us might have known, but we have not applied. You know what I'm saying? So ignorance can be coupled with disobedience. And then we find ourselves in certain situations that we're saying, how did I and I get in this sort of situation where we are overcome by it? I mean, there are ones and ones who are going to various different levels of this spiritual warfare. Some are so beat up, spiritually speaking, and, and have become so depressed. Some of our own brothers and sisters, you know this, in and, and, and this, and this world, you know, have, been, have been so distracted and mistracted and so depressed, so double-minded, they are not even effective for themselves. And they, they have fallen prey for, for the system of things. They have somehow gone off course. Right? And this, I'm speaking to uh, a, a sister of I and I's, um, Sister Khalifa. I'm speaking about your particular situation, but not, not against you, but on, in your favor. I'm saying that what the sister has experienced, and I and I own, this is what the Spirit showed I and I, that many of us have begun the walk in Rastafari. It's like a Christian, for example, a nominal Christian in the world, begun their walk in Christianity, but somehow have been offended. In other words, somehow may have been violated. This is what we put out the vids speaking about um, with uh, the irritated genie of the Sufi, um, predators amongst us and war on the horizon, speaking about this homosexual sodomite agenda and the pedophilia and, and the real connections between this and how this is destroying, you know what I'm saying, <clears throat> destroying children, because they do this with children, and, <clears throat> excuse me, it's a part of that mind control thing. You know, we talk about trauma-based mind control. You know what I'm saying? But this is exactly what the Bible tells us that, the agenda of Satan is, you understand, to kill, 
and to destroy. So some are already, we find them, already wandering, in other words, in this wilderness. So they're no longer in that discipleship. Their life no longer is in any state of order. This is why the first thing is, for I and I, is remembering the Sabbath day and keep it set apart because Yeshua HaMoshiach says the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So we learn that, <coughs> but if you get some water, we learn that um, Sabbath, give thanks, that Sabbath um, keeping you, is done. That keeping the Sabbath, really, it is, according to the word, remembering the Sabbath. That's what the commandment reads, even in translation. Remember the Sabbath. So what does that word remember mean? Remember means recall it to mind, to meditate it. Now, why is meditation the key? But most of us do not know how to meditate. So we are for becoming forgetful hearers because we're just hearing the word, but we're not taking it to the next step, which is reading it for ourselves. Now, as I expressed to the brethren, I expressed to others, like, first of all, you've got to recognize this. Here's the good news, is that no matter what you have gone through or what has happened to you, right, <coughs> Where there's life, there's hope. That means that if you woke up this morning, this afternoon, this evening, this night, or whenever you woke up, if there's life, if you are alive, there is still hope, especially if you are in your right state of mind. And if you're not fully in your right state of mind, your proper person, if you have all of your limbs, you see, you have to give thanks. Sometimes we forget about these things. You know, because when we talk about prayer, to pray, the Word tells us, and let me open this up, <coughs> it tells us that we should pray always. We should pray always. Now, why is that important? Now, as a forgetful hearer, you know, when we become forgetful hearers, so we hear that Word, but we don't act on it. You see, and this is where Satan, where the evildoers, where they get the jump on us. You understand? Know this is where they get the, the jump on us. I don't think I have it here. I must have took it off of this, this uh, computer right here, a program. I wanted to look up a couple of verses. I want to get into this, but I want to speak to our brothers or sisters who are, who are suffering, the suffering Rastafari, that there is... That there is hope, there is overcoming for your situation. But you have to strengthen your faith. You have to grow. You have to work out that salvation. We have the grace. It's not, it's not um, the works of the law, but it's the works of the faith. You understand? Know the faith of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos. Not our so-called faith, but it is our faith in him who is the living example and demonstration of that faith and that walk for each of I and I and I. Now, we know as Rastafari, right, we speak of the Father, Abba, the Hashem, Edomari, Haile Selassie, our Godfather and King of Kings. Yet, the King of Kings teach us that, first of all, it is about Yeshua, this is the testimony of Ketamawi Haile Selassie, is Jesus Christos and the Bible. You understand? So we as Rastafari, that's, that's foundational. However, many of you all have gone many years in Rastafari, and perhaps, you know, you heard about the Bible, you might look at this or look at that or use it to point to Ethiopia here there, but you have not really grown in it. Now, see, there, there is a... A situation that, 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 that develops, you see what I'm saying, is that every word that you hear of truth, you're responsible for it. You see, this is why Christ said that before he had come and spoken to them, right, in a sense they had no sin because one could say they did not know better. But now that they know better, 
They cannot say that they never knew better. So before they knew, like, like many wrong things have happened to you all and to, and to all of us. You know what I'm saying? In this life, in this world. You know what I'm saying? In particular, the, the, the matter of the sexual abuse. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and people suppress these, these sort of events, these sort of things. This is why I think the documentary Predators Amongst Us, I'm still on that particular theme because I see how it connects with the real world issues that's going on with the young um, African, Ethiopian, Hebrew men, males, and females, men and women. When we look around in this world, that has been taken over by Satan. You know what I'm saying? And the only reason it's been taken over is because the first Adam or the first black man, in other words, failed. But the second or the new black man, in other words, the second Adam is our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach. This is why when we speak about Africa and black people thing and 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 trying to change our situation, we have to recognize the importance of the black Christ. First of all, that it's a reality, whether the whites, the European, the Gentiles, because they've invested a lot in whitewashing the image. So no wonder they don't jump up and say, yes, it is correct, but they still try to say, well, color doesn't matter. But even when you understand that, yes, Yeshua HaMoshiach is the Ethiopian, is a black man, his mother is a black woman, right? Beyond boasting to the Gentiles, we have to now over, we have to receive it. See, that's the real Kabbalah, Kabbalah, to receive it. That's the word. The word Kabbalah means to receive. So there's a teaching on Kabbalah that we want to touch on as well, but before even getting into this teaching or that teaching, we're doing this particular um, teaching and, and really just trying to, trying to give an introduction into what the Holy Spirit has, has put upon our heart to communicate to our brothers and sisters in this particular season right now. You understand? In this particular season right now. Um, <clears throat> so let's deal with meditation. Because the wilderness experience of meditation, I think, is intimately connected. In fact, and just what we said a couple of moments ago, when we mentioned the the Senbet, the Shabbat. What does Exodus chapter 20 say? It says to remember. Right? Now that word remember, Bamarinya, is Asif. Right? Asif. Masef. To think about. In other words, that's the very same root of the word meditate. Now in the Hebrew, it's, it's the Haga. Now Haga, and we took some notes right here, and we give thanks to one uh Joseph Prince um, from Singapore. Uh, I've been checking out his show on the air, and it's very interesting when you check out different um, um, Bible teachers and ones out there. Some of them I really don't check out too much more because it's kind of like, it's, it depends on what grade you're on. I, I think it's necessary for many of y'all who are just starting out to, first of all, get familiar with, this, with the content and the various different expressions of so-called Christianity. I know it might be confusing at a moment because this one says that. This is why you have to read and study the Word because you have to be able to be able to discern you see, one of, the, one of the things that the Israelites failed to do, and the prophets tell us of this, is that they failed to discern and make a distinction between the holy, that which was kedus, and that which was profane. You see, so that's what leads to the confusion. You know what I'm saying? In other words, Christ said, let your yea be yea, and your nay be nay, but whatever is more than that, like yea and nay, that keeps you in this double mind state. And some of y'all have been diagnosed. Now notice this. This is where it now deals with what's going on with the whole um, Babylon and medicine and big pharma. Some of y'all might be on certain prescriptions for certain so-called psychotics. They call these medications psychotics. 
Now, notice that there was probably a time when, you know, you might have got a little upset, you might have got out of bounds, so and so on, but now what they're doing with, with the mischief they're making with the law and y'all not being in your proper person, I mean, proper, I'm talking about a legal person, your, your proper lawful person, reclaiming your inalienable rights, recognizing your true birthright, you understand, and taking off the slave master's name. All of that is basically um, bureaucratic there. That, that is a legal argument, and that's paperwork there. Those are the, the, the lower degrees. You know what the real higher degree is? The real higher degree is conforming in your heart and in your mind. See, the Bible says, you must be born again from above. You understand? The, the Word teaches, Christ teaches us, it's His Word. It's the words that we must really treasure up. It's the words that are really precious. You understand? It's Christ's words. Not just the words on the paper, but making those words living in us. But there's a process to, for, for that seed, you understand, for that seed to be planted in, in, in good ground. You see, that parable in Matthew chapter 13, and you need to read it. If you read it before, just read it again. If you get a chance, pause this right here and read through Matthew chapter 13, especially the first part of it, the parable of the sower. You understand, you need to meditate upon this, but you need, first of all, to read it to study it, you understand, because you have to study what you're reading, but because you're hearing it, you see, but it begins with hearing, the whole thing, it begins with hearing, see, what we hear as a principle, it determines what we exercise faith in, what we believe, if you, if you can receive it, because even though one say, oh, they don't believe, they're trying to say, I don't want to believe anymore since the word believe means this to me. But they still are acting in what could be defined as belief, faith, or trust, or confidence. All of those words are connected with the word so-called belief. But then we go to the, the Afro-Shemitic, the b biblical, the Hebrew, and we say amen. See, we try to get to the the foundation, the amen. Now, I, I'm going to leave this up here for a moment, although I want to go to the whiteboard and, 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 and kind of write this out for you, but I want you to recognize where we're at right now and where many of y'all are at. We're in this wilderness experience. You know what I'm saying? Because we recognize that, yeah, that's Babylon. In other words, we're conscious to the things, some of the things and signs of Babylon. You understand? Know and even how it connects with the Egypt of the underworld, you understand, with the Egypt of the Duat, where we're at right now, we can see these Masonic signs, what they, what's going on, and how, the, you know, the Egyptian the mystery cult and all these kind of things, what Babylon is doing, see, we, we become, we overstand, but we as once lost but now found, if we recognize who we are, and if we still are Remember what happened in this area of Scripture when it was in the wilderness? What happened in the wilderness? What happened with the Israelites? And do you really know that? Or, or have you heard, you've seen the Moses movie? And see, here's what a lot of folks do. I say, we need to read the Bible. We need to study this. We say, yeah, well, I, you know, people whining and grinding about reading the Bible. Well, that's one of the reasons why a lot of you all are having the problems that you're having. You understand? Because you're not in obedience... You understand? In obedience to Yeshua, to the grace of God in Christ. There is an obedience. You know what I mean? There is. See, here's where the counterfeit Christendom basically um, puts out what we call um, beware of the abbreviated gospel. They tell us that um, it's not about law, but it's about grace. And they never define the particular law is speaking about because those laws for sacrifices for falling short to that standard of God, but the standards of God never change, and that's what's contained in the Ten Commandments. You know, saying yes, there's do and don't do, but see, a lot of folks get confused about that particular matter right there in um, in um, Christendom, and we wanted to actually address 
that we want to do a, a couple of lectures. One lecture was, um, is uh, faith in Christ lawless? We want to ask that, use that as the, the, the subject. Is faith in Christ lawless? Because it sounds... And see, this is all if you're not getting into the studies yourself. That's what it says. Study and show thyself approved to God as a workman that need not be ashamed. One brother just said, spoke to I and said that he want to, what does he need to do? Almost like it's like what the Ethiopian eunuch asks. You understand? One must, and what did the Ethiopian eunuch, what was he told? Let's go to the scripture right here. What one must do, one must have faith, have amen, ma'men, which is translated in some places as believe, you understand? Know Other places as faith, it, it implies trust or confidence, you understand? Know one must have trust or confidence in Yeshua HaMoshiach. But one also must learn of Yeshua. You see, in other words, it says, like, how can one have faith, or my men, or King James says, believe in one in whom they have never heard? You see, so you have to ask yourself, have you heard and have you read what you heard? Because you could listen to a lot of lectures, a lot of good lecturers on the Bible and teachers even, and you hear a lot of stuff, but have you really read these things and studied these things? In other words, we're saying read, study. So first is hearing. First is hearing. Let's go to the Roman verse on this. This is building up our faith. We need to build up our faith because there's a lot of trials and tribulations out there. And I want to remind you that there's the, we have these resources in, in, in the real world and within, but we learn about these things and we're reminded and we can study these things from the scriptures and from the Bible. You see, the word here is dead. But now when we take this word in us, you understand, know in the name of Yeshua HaMushi, our black Lord and Savior, to the glory of our Father, our Kedus, our Holy Father, right? Then it becomes a living word. You see, and this is what we meditate. This is what we mutter. You understand? This is what, you know, I, I, I use this example about meditation because I really want to do this on meditation versus trials and tribulations. You understand? And then as we go forward, hopefully, y'all willing, we can give a couple of examples and even testimony from our own experience. So we're not teaching this because it sounds nice. You understand? We are teaching on this because it works, it's effective, and the brothers and sisters we've been hearing from are giving I and I living testimony that either they heard about this, but they did otherwise, and now they're confessing to being in situations that has been caused by their own negligence. And we do fall short. See, get off that guilt trip. We do fall short. But what is life, there's hope. You know what I'm saying? That's if we're not a forgetful hearer. You see what I'm saying? So most of what we're going through is, um, um, how can we say it is, it is, it is like more, it, 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 it's not, um, it's like mediational. You know, it is not um, really like punitive in that sense. But it's to really get us on the right track to wake us up to make us conscious of what's really going on. I mean, I was trying to um, minister to a sister who was telling me that, you know, she's been diagnosed with paranoid, schizophrenic, bipolar, so forth and so on. And um, it's interesting because at least as I've known the person before having the opportunity to um, reason with her and to talk with her and, her and her to also testify about what she's been, some of what she's been going through. I never noticed that before. But what I clearly did notice, you know, is that she 
cheated on Rastafari. And here's what I mean by cheated on Rastafari, because a lot of us do it in different ways. Many who, of y'all who have been talking about Haile Selassie, Haile Selassie, but have not been speaking of his son, Yeshua HaMoshiach, and, and, and studying and growing in the Bible, also, in a sense, have fallen short. You know, and this is why when we see this prophetic word in John, it is so, it is so interesting to us in the, book of, in the book of John, right? When we look at this word in the book of John. In the book of John, and this is what I was going to share with the brethren, and I have to give him a call forward, but um, I, I said that there's a lot of, I keep going over this ground, and let me just bring it up. Fellowship is maintained by Christ's advocacy. It says, my little children, 1 John chapter 2, my little children, these things write I to you, that ye sin not. If any man sin, right, and, and sin means falling short, in like an archery, if you miss the mark, you understand? Know if any man has fallen short of conformity to the will of God in Christ, in and through that, 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 that redemption, that, that righteousness that we have, now we're in right relationship because we have my men or our main trust and confidence in the one whom he has sent, and, and that is Yeshua HaMoshiach. In other words, no one can get to the Father except through the Son. The Son is like the door. He's likened to a door. And he uses that very language within, um, within the Gospels, within the Wengel. But here we're in First John. Remember, John is interesting, Johannes. Johannes, the name Johannes, which is um, Ethiopic for, for, for John, means the grace of Yah, or the grace of Jah. And Jah is said to be short for Jehovah, or Jave, or Yahweh. It's said to mean the I am that I am. Actually, it means the He is who He is in that form. The I am that I am is the Ehye, Asher, Ehye. You understand? I am, I am being that which I will be, or really in the sense, I, I am the one who, who, who exists and the one who speaks, the one who is the living word, is what it's saying when you get into the, the Afro-Shemitic, the core, dealing with like the linguistic of it. It's, it's very interesting because the, the linguistics help to untangle the Kabbalistic metaphysical application. So you see a lot of things are embedded in the word. This is why they say if you want to hide something from folks, put it in a book. You know what I'm saying? This is why reading is so very important. And brothers and sisters who are reading and trying to study and have people try and distract you, you will find that people who are demonically um, touched or influenced, generally speaking, I call them demoniacs. That means those who who are not living according to Yeshua HaMoshiach, but who are living according to the dictates of the world. You understand? They believe in the world. They believe they have faith in this system. Even though it's corrupt, even though people lie, steal, and cheat, and, 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 and all sort of sins and, and other um, crimes and, and, and misdemeanors, felonies, so-called spiritual felonies, they still believe in the system. You know what I'm saying? They think that the Babylonian sun, in that sense, will come up tomorrow. In, in, in spite of even great economic collapse or great um, political um, um, misgivings and all types of stuff that we've heard going on. I mean, look at this system of things that we live in presently. You know what I'm saying? This Gentile world dominion. People will say it's bad, it's corrupt, it's going to fall, it's got to change, but yet, they cannot admit one thing. They still believe in it. You see, and that's a powerful testimony to what you believe in. You understand what you believe in. Some folks say, well, forget about reading the Bible and all that. It's about making, making money and pay. That shows you what they believe in. That's their faith right there. So begin to um, gain wisdom. It says before you're getting, get wisdom. You understand? In other words, 
and, 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 and this leads you to overstanding, but wisdom is the key. You see, but wisdom comes in order after. Notice this, it comes after knowledge. You understand? It comes after a basic knowledge. So we say, get informed. You understand? Know Study. Check it out for yourself. Do your own uh, ask, seek, knock in order to know for yourself. Each of us must do this. You see, many of us don't admit it, but we are dependent on the group in the sense that we hope that the group makes up in a sense, for what each of us lack. And that's not necessarily wrong. But what are we, are we even doing the, the, the minimal work in our spiritual life to, to readjust our way of thinking? You understand? And then our way of practicing. You understand? How do we practice this? It says, my little children, these things I write to you, that ye sin not, that we don't fall short of that mark. We don't miss it. But if any man, it says, if any man sin, we have an advocate. What was this, an advocate? This is talking like it's legal. We have an advocate. If anyone sin, and, and see, even ourselves in our own walk, we were going through situations some years ago, I remember this particular um, series of trials and tribulations, and where Satan, where the devil, yet the regular may be cursed, what he was, what he was planning in my mind state, and it's interesting because the Kippur and the guest speaks about this too. You know, getting our spiritual house in order. This is so very important. And I, I didn't really know how to get into this sort of a reasoning. But um, we, were, we were following different threads, so to speak. You know, different threads. Now, in this chapter 100 of the Kibbutz of Neges, and I'm going to go forward with that, but what, 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 what Satan was trying to plant in my mind, and, and, and this, is, this, is how, this, this is how we talk about spiritual warfare. You know what I'm saying? Spiritual, the spiritual warfare doesn't start so much. You understand, when you really begin to trust and receive Kabbalah, the word, when you really get it, you know when you get something, you're like, yeah, I've been hearing about that. And then one day it's like, oh, you really get it. It was like there, but the way you were seeing it or the way you were receiving it, maybe you was receiving it like everybody around you. But then you start to think about that for yourself, to really look at that and allow the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God and Christ, you understand, to really guide you, you understand, and, and, and then as you follow that line of thought, you really got it then, you understand, and this is why I'm doing these teachings right here, especially, I think these teachings speak more to our, our inner life, you understand, because everything else that we could do, and that we must do, and that we seek to do is dependent upon that, you know, you heard the old saying, um, they said, don't let don't let, um, don't let them get your goat. And I used to hear this saying. It's an old country idiom. Don't let someone get your goat. Or, or, or you ain't going to get my goat, in a sense. In other words, the goat, remember, the goat is a sin sacrifice, according to Torah. According to the Orit, the Torah, we dealt with that in Vayikra, or the Orit Zelewawiyan, which is the Hebrew book of Leviticus. We dealt with that. You understand? The different kind of sacrifice. And we learned also that these different sacrifices, in that sense, were types of Christ. You understand? In, in the fullness, when the veil is now taken off of our eyes. You know, when you hear, you know, when you hear Negroes say, oh, now you get it. You, you know, so there's a certain level of true spirituality that many of us, though we may be familiar with, some of the knowledge. People say it's not about your head, but it's about your heart. Really, the truth is it's about your head and your heart. It's like, it's like the, imagine getting the knowledge and learning of Christ. Remember what he says, what, what is eternal life? That they might know, not believe, not have heard, but they would have an intimate knowledge of you, the true God, 
and Jesus Christos, Yeshua HaMoshiach, whom, whom you have sent. This is eternal life. What? Eternal life is about knowing the true God and Jesus Christos, whom the true God has sent. You see what I'm saying? These are the keys. You see what I'm saying? These are the keys. And then when you know that, like know that scripture, you've got to meditate on that. You've got to mutter on that. What is meditation? Meditation is muttering. You understand? In the Hebrew, uses the word um, um, hagar. You understand? Hagar, if, if I'm correct, it uses hagar. We took some notes of this, looked it up. Yeah, it uses hagar. You understand? Hagar, or like muttering. Like gara, gara. Muttering, meditating. Muttering and meditating. Muttering on it is to like, it's like, you know, when somebody's saying, yeah, man. Yo, who you think he's messing with, man? He's messing with me? What? Well, I'm, 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 I'm going to teach him something. Yeah, man, he said such and such and such. Yeah, but you know, I said it. Okay, yeah, yeah. Why is really? You know, when you start to talk these things over, people say it's talking to yourself. That's what they call it. Some folks call it talking to yourself. But you do this even if you don't talk outwardly. You talk this way in your mind. So sometimes when negative things happen, when the negative happens, what happens? Folks will, will dwell on it, will meditate on it. You understand? And, and what they're doing is they're, they're giving it life. They're taking from their life, like psychic force, their soul force, and they are putting that portion of their soul, their psychic energy into that. You understand? They're investing it in that. You, you know what I mean? And then they wonder why, well, well, why then these people who meditate these evil things become perfectly evil. They become, it's like nowadays you hear about crime and what's going on, and it's like you're getting like these perfect so-called evil doers. Why? Because they've meditated. They're like, oh, we want to talk to this killer and find out what makes him tick and how he did this and learn his, why you want to, I always just wonder, why do you want to learn these things? Even if this guy's a mass killer of so many people, why don't they just done that person so that person can go and, and deal with the souls which are waiting at the throne of God? Why are they allowing this person? Sometimes it's so clear that, that I'm not talking about in these dubious cases where they try to, out of racism and white supremacy, convict the, the, the person of color, so to speak, or the indigenous human being, you know what I'm saying, instead of one of their own. We're not speaking about those cases. We're talking about some clear kind of cases. Why do they do that? You know what I'm saying? So what they do is perfect. They meditate on They study it. They go through those things. They've heard about it. Remember, heard, read, studied. Then the, the fourth level, the fourth key. Remember, the first one is hearing the word. Why is hearing the word so important? Because listen to this word. It says that if any of us sin, you understand, that we have an advocate. What is an advocate? What is an advocate? See, an advocate is a position at law. It's like we have an advocate. We have an attorney, so to say, a lawyer. Christ is our lawyer in the spiritual world. In the spiritual warfare, we have an advocate. See, what Satan tries to do is keep you on the guilt mode. 